Hello and welcome to Miracle English Language and Literature Institute. I'm Professor Abha Sharma and these days I'm doing the biographies of uh, famous English authors and their literary attributes. I've already taken medieval poets like Chaucer and Langland and in this video I'm going to take up John Garr. But before this I should tell you that for more uh, literature knowledge, if you're passionate about it, come and join uh, Miracle classes for UGC net, for your masters, for your bachelors or whatever course you're doing in literature or linguistics. So let's begin with John Garr. He is said to have taken birth in 1330 and he died in October 1408. That means eight years after Chaucer and he was elder to uh, Chaucer. So he was an English poet, a contemporary of William Langland, Chaucer and the Pearl Poet. I will be taking next the Pearl Poet. As I told you that he was a personal friend of Geoffrey Chaucer, Chaucer had called him Moral Gar. He was also known to Richard II and Henry IV. The sad part is that he became blind seven years before his death. He was buried in the chapel of St. John the Baptist in St. Xavier's Church, originally the church of the Priory of St. Mary Quivery, of which he had been a substantial benefactor. The effigy on his tomb represents him resting his head on three large volumes entitled Vox Clementis, Speculum uh, Meditantis, and Confessio Amentis. These are the three major works in three different languages. And in each, he is a moralist concerned with the ills of contemporary society, particularly in England, brought on by man's departure from virtue, reason, and good order. Gar's three major works are in French, English and Latin and he also wrote a series of French ballads intended for the English court. The Speculum Meditentis or Mirror de Leomi in French is composed of 12 line stanzas and opens impressively with the description of the devil's marriage to the seven daughters of sin. Continuing with the marriage of reason and the seven virtues, it ends with a searing examination of the sins of English society just before the Peasants' Revolt of 1381. The denunciatory tone is relieved at the very end by a long hymn to the Virgin. So, Mirror de la Omi, the Mirror of Mankind, as I told you, Speculum Hominis, which has the Latin title Speculum Meditantis, is an Anglo normal poem of 29, 945 lines written in iambic octosyllables. Gar's major theme is man's salvation. Internal evidence suggests that composition was completed before 1380. Mekele discovered the only manuscript in the Cambridge University Library. The story of this work is very interesting. The union of the devil and sin produces the seven daughters, pride, envy, anger, sloth, avarice, gluttony and lechery. Reason and conscience are unable to save mankind from the daughters of their granddaughters. In the second third of Mirror, God sends the seven virtues who have granddaughters who oppose the devil's forces. Much of the final third is an extensive examination of the corruption of the three estates of society, church, state and workers. Everyone is tainted. Repentance requires the intercession of the Virgin. The conclusion of the poem has been lost. The next work is Vox Clementis, the voice of one crying out, is a Latin poem of 10,265 lines in elegiac couplets by Gar. The first of the seven books is a dream vision giving a vivid account of the Peasants' Rebellion of 1381. 
Mekele described the remaining books. The general plan of the author is to describe the condition of society and of the various degrees of men, much as in the latter portion of the Speculum Meditantis. Now we'll talk about Confessio Mentis, The Lover's Confession, a very popular 33,000 line Middle English poem by John Garr, which uses the confession made by an aging lover to the chaplain of Venus as a frame story for the collection of shorter narrative poems. According to its prologue, it was composed at the request of Richard II. It stands with the works of Chaucer, Langland and the Pearl Poet as one of the great works of late 14th century English literature. The index of Middle English verse shows that in the era before the printing press, it was one of the most often copied manuscripts. 59 copies along with Canterbury Tales uh, means uh, it was around 59 copies and canterbury tales was 72 copies and pious diplomen was 63 copies so these three works had the maximum manuscript uh, belonging to the middle english period chaucer's friendship with gar is also well documented When Chaucer was sent as a diplomat to Italy in 1378, Gar was one of the men to whom he gave power of attorney over his affairs in England. The two poets also paid one another compliments in their verse. Chaucer dedicated his Troilus and Cressidae in part to Moral Gar by saying, "O oh, Moral Gar," and Gar reciprocated by placing a speech in praise of Chaucer. in the mouth of venus at the end of his confession mentis in 1400 gar dedicated and presented his french work sincate uh, ballads that is 50 ballads which some attributes to his younger days to king henry old and blind john gar died in 1408 leaving a considerable estate He was buried in St Mary's Overies later as St Saviour's now Southwark Cathedral where his tomb can still be seen today. I hope you must have liked the facts which I have collected for you uh, on the medieval poet John Gar. Like, comment, share and subscribe the video to your friends who are looking for deep literature knowledge. Until I come back take care bye bye